Hello, I hope you're well. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today's video is my spring TBR. So in addition to the TBRs that I do for various readathons, I've also started doing seasonal ones and my last one was obviously winter, but since spring is just around the corner or perhaps even the very day that I'm uploading this video, I thought it was time to do an updated one. Full disclosure, I did abysmally with my winter TBR. I think I had 12 books on it and at the time that I'm filming I've read four of them and I should be able to finish at least one more by the end of March, but that's less than 50% so it's not exactly a great statistic. However, I am trying to set myself up for success with this spring one by taking into account that I might have readathons that I want to do, giving myself more room for um, mood reading as it were, and selecting books that would also help me accomplish my 2021 reading goals. So without further ado, why don't we just dive right in? So the first two books that I want to talk about are books two and three in the Outlander series by Diana Gabaldon. So we have Dragonfly in Amber and also Voyager. Now one of my goals for this year is to read the entire series and there are eight books currently and the ninth I believe is supposed to come out at some point this year so I would really like to finish the remaining seven before that happens which might be a tall order admittedly. When it comes to Dragonfly and Amber which is book two it picks up where book one left off, so Claire and Jamie are trying to thwart the Jacobite Rebellion, which essentially ends the Highlander way of life as they know it, and also there is a dual plotline, part of which takes place in Claire's present and then the one that is in the 18th century. I kind of have a sense of where this is going because I have watched the series, actually really enjoy the series. Um, but I'm really excited to read the book. And then as far as Voyager, which is book three in the series, this, as far as I understand it from what I've seen with the TV show, is essentially Claire having to make a choice again between her present and the 18th century with Jamie. So again, looking forward to this. I do have some idea of what's happening and where things go because I have seen the, ser the series itself, which is I think it's season five or season six now, but still very much looking forward to reading them. They are both very long books. Um, Dragonfly and Ember is just under a thousand pages and Voyager is just over a thousand pages. So quite hefty reads. The next book is Catherine the Great, Portrait of a Woman by Robert K. Massey which has appeared on my channel a few times. It was on my winter TBR and obviously I didn't get around to it, but I really want to prioritize this because I'm still so very excited about it. So this is nonfiction and it kind of says what it does on the tin. It is a biography on Catherine the Great, one of the Tsarinas of Russia. I think the last Tsarina to actually rule in her own right. She was a enlightened or an en enlightened despot and she has been a historical girl crush for me for many years so I really want to get around to this. It also kind of came to the top of my TBR because I was talking to a close friend who was reading this and only had amazing things to say about it so I really want to get around to this this time. Hold me accountable. Hold me accountable people. And again, this is a pretty hefty book. Um, it is just over 500 pages. So another big one for the spring. The next book is one that I don't have yet, but it is in route and that is Liberty by Ka Caitlin Greenidge or Greenidge. And this was actually one of my most anticipated historical fiction releases of 2021 that I did back in January. And it is billed as being this coming of age story of this freeborn black woman living during the Reconstruction era in Harlem. And so essentially 
her mother wants her to go to medical school and then practice medicine by her side. Liberté seems to have other ideas and ends up marrying a man and moving to Haiti where the reality isn't all it's cracked up to be. And so I'm really excited about this one. It's also, I think, the like Roxanne Gay book club choice for May, which is pretty cool. But this is a book that I am really excited about because I am trying to diversify my reading. But since I do read a lot of historical fiction, I am searching for more BIPOC authors, more LGBTQ plus authors that write in this genre. And this was one of them that really piqued my interest. So I will certainly report back once I've read this one. The next book is a classic and that is Mrs. Dalloway by Virginia Woolf and I have somehow managed to escape reading this despite being an English major and despite reading as much 19th and early 20th century literature as I do and it's high time I fixed this. I know that this is a favorite book for a number of people. One that comes to mind is Claire Fenby. She talks about Virginia Woolf and Mrs. Dalloway constantly, so I have really high expectations for this one. But to be honest, I think that I have always kind of shied away from it because I'm aware that it is written in a stream of consciousness style, and I can never remember whether or not I like stream of consciousness or not. I feel like I'm one of the few people that tends to be indifferent to it, but I just read Ian McEwan's Atonement, which is also stream of consciousness, and I didn't hate it. So <laughs> I'm gonna give this a try. It is the story of Clarissa Dalloway, who is this high society woman living in London, and it follows her over the course of a single day, which also reads to me kind of like a play. So I am excited to read this one and form my own opinions about it, finally. Next up is another historical fiction, and it is 50 Words for Rain by Asha Lemmy, and I'm really excited about this one. It is set in post-World War II Japan, and lately I've been reading a lot of World War II historical fiction set in Asia, so this is definitely following a trend for me, but I'm very interested in this because the main character, Nori, appears to be biracial, so she is the daughter of a Japanese mother and her black GI lover, and Nori is raised by her grandparents who do not like the fact that she is biracial and are trying to hide her identity, but I love this idea of the main character being an outsider and taking a look at that more closely. Um, and that's really all I know about this book. I haven't heard many people talk about it. In fact, I don't think I've heard anyone talk about it, but it just sounds like it's going to be a truly emotional and heartbreaking story, but there seems to be a brother-sister relationship in here that I think will also be heartwarming, and I do love sibling bonds in novels. So there you have it. The next book is more historical fiction, and it is The Luminaries by Eleanor Caton, which has been on my physical TBR since this book won The Man Booker in 2013 but I think the sheer size of it has often kept it at arm's length. It is like 800 pages, which generally doesn't scare me away. As you will have seen from this video, I have plenty of big books here to read. However, it had definitely given me pause with this one, but it came back kind of to my consciousness and my awareness because I saw the trailer for the TV show with Eva Green, and it looked amazing and so my goal is to read the book before I watch the TV show which means I need to read it ASAP before my willpower gives out on me but it just sounds really interesting. The book is set in the 19th century which is right up my alley but it is set in New Zealand during the gold rush which would be very new territory for me but it's also making me think this will have a little bit of lawlessness and a 
Wild West type of vibe, only New Zealand style. I don't know a ton about the premise, but I do think that there will be a lot about fortunes, both gained and lost, and as I said, a lot of sort of vigilante, taking matters into your own hands type of attitude. But it does sound really, really good, and I do want to get to this because, as I said, I don't know how much willpower I have to not watch the TV series before I get to this. So this needs to be read ASAP Rocky. The next book is another big one, and it is From Here to Eternity by James Jones, which is another whopping 800 page book. I would consider this a modern classic because it was written in 1950 or 1951, and it was also a National Book Award winner back in the day. I have seen the movie, which is a phenomenal World War II black and white film with Deborah Carr and Burt Lancaster and Montgomery Clift, and I love it. It's just breathtaking. But I've never read the book. In fact, I didn't know it was based on a book until I happened to discover this while nosing around the internet. But I'm very excited to read this because of what I know from the movie. So as I already mentioned, it is World War II fiction. It was published only a handful of years after the war had ended. It takes place in Hawaii and the main character is this buglehorn player and I think he's a lightweight boxer but when he refuses to join the boxing team basically he is hazed and his life is made a living hell. There's also I believe a romance in here which is played up pretty massively in the movie. It is that beach sex scene that I feel like everyone has seen in a commercial or something at this point with two people rolling around in the waves as they come crashing on their bodies. Um, so yeah, they play that up in the movie. Not sure if they do that here, but I am really looking forward to reading this one as I am all the books on my list. Um, but yeah, that's all I know. That is all I know. Next is Affinity by Sarah Waters, who if you watch my channel you know is one of my favorite authors. Her books are literally everywhere because I have been working through her backlist um, since I discovered her last summer, and this is one of the final two books that I need to read of hers. And I am as excited about this one as I am all the others because they've all been four or five star reads for me at this point, and this is actually one of the smaller ones. So as I've said on this channel before, and I will say it many, many times in the future, I consider Sarah Waters the queen of plot twists. She is phenomenal at creating this gothic atmosphere, and so I'm expecting a lot of that from this book as well. She is also amazing at doing LGBTQ plus storylines in her historical fiction. And this book, Affinity, is another one of her Victorian novels, and this young woman from genteel society decides to do good work or charity work by going to a prison, one of the most notorious prisons for female prisoners, and becomes interested in one of the inmates there. Um, I don't know much more than that, but it sounds like it's going to be a wild ride, and I can't wait, like really can't wait. So this one is going to get read ASAP. And lastly, we have the women's history of the modern world. How Radicals, Rebels, and Every Women Revolutionized the Last 200 Years by Rosalind Miles. Now this is probably my most recent acquisition, and it only came to my attention because Katie from over at Katie Reads and Rants mentioned it during one of our like hours long FaceTimes and I just had to have it because the subject matter sounded up my alley, but I also have a nostalgic connection to Rosalind Miles, the author. I didn't know she did nonfiction, but I have read her historical fiction 
Um, in fact, she had a trilogy on Guinevere that I read in my early teens that I adored, but it was probably the first like adult historical fiction that I'd read that had like sex scenes in them and not just fade to blacks. And so there is a nostalgia there. Um, but as I said, I didn't know she wrote nonfiction, but this just sounded amazing. I don't know much about it. It says, now is the time for a new women's history for famous, infamous, and unsung women to get their due from French Revolution to the Me Too movement. And the book lists a bunch of women from um, Eugenia Tolls, Indira Gandhi, um, Jakenda Arden, and others, including people that I don't know. So, so yeah, it just sounds like it's going to be a really informative read. I don't know if it's that there are biographies on all of these women or that it's just kind of weaving a women's history that mentions and brings up these women's accomplishments. I don't know, but it definitely sounds like a book for me, so I'm excited about it. Also, the colors on this cover are just so poppy and it makes me happy. Um, but yeah, that's all I know about that one. I'm really excited about it. And hopefully Rosalind Miles does not let me down in my old age. <laughs> So yeah, those are the 10 books that I want to read this spring, and since I'm very literal, for me that means between the first day of spring and the first day of summer. I think all of these books have the potential to be five-star reads. In fact, a couple of them were on my five-star predictions, um, Catherine the Great and also The Luminaries, so really high hopes and high expectations for these. But yeah, that's it. If you've read any of these books, certainly let me know your thoughts in the comments below. But in the meantime, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Bye!